Hello everybody. Uh, we're going to do a presentation on how to modify a USB plasma ball uh, to work with the Spooky 2 or basically to work with any function generator. The first thing I'm going to do is to take the plasma ball out of the box. There are several different manufacturers with slight variations on the circuit board. Inside the box you have a USB power cord. I'm going to put that aside for now. I'm going to take the wrapper off the take the wrapper off and get the box out of the way. First thing I want to, the next thing I want to show you is the schematic that I'm going to be using. And hopefully we can get a good shot at it. We do. We have two schematics that are available on the Spooky2 website forum. And we're going to be building the second unit, but I will do it in stages. I will build a one channel first, and then I'll show you the mods that are necessary for the two channel. Every time I do something that's related to the two channel, I'll mention it specifically. This only has to be done for the two channel. And that's the download that you can get. You can get the soul sheet off the Spooky2 website off their forum. And I'll be using this as my guide. First thing I'm going to do or with the mechanics here is to just take it apart. And I'm taking out three screws. Some have four screws. And this one has three and I've taken this off and there is the basic guts of the unit and here's the plasma ball and we're going to put the plasma ball aside for now because this is what we're going to be working with I'll put these three screws over here the next thing there are three screws that hold this little circuit board on. So take this, this is just a spacer, a dressing up spacer to make the whole unit look pretty. I'm going to take this, these three screws out. Well, I'm going to try to take these three screws out. I think they glued this one in. Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to go get a better screwdriver. I don't have the power. With that little jeweler screwdriver to get that last one out. I apologize for not being more prepared by having this right here. Okay. Okay, that's all it took. It was a little bit more leverage, better leverage, more leverage, whatever. Take this screw out of here. All right, so I basically at this point in time I have the whole circuit board removed from the Spooky. Everything that's needed to run this plasma ball is right on here, with the exception of the power supply. Let's see if I can pay attention to what I'm doing. There it is. So I've already warmed up my soldering iron. Get this, put this out of the way. So the rule that you have to follow is take everything off in the way of uh, components, um, transistors, caps, resistors. Excuse me, not transistors. You have to take that off if you pop it, and I pop many in my experiments. Just take off the caps and the resistors. Not everything. I don't know why I said the word everything. So if you have a solder iron and a solder sucker, it should be a walk in the park. And I'm looking for my solder sucker. And it's nice if you have something to hold your circuit board. And 
get your tip reasonably clean. And start removing components. Start soldering points and soldering components. So this is going to be, take a few minutes and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and I'll come back when I have the components that I want off uh, the board and I'll pick it up from there. All right, I have removed the four components. I have no idea why I originally said everything. Um, I didn't practice doing this video, so this video is all live. So the four components were actually just two resistors and two microcapacitors, and you may be able to see them. On, there they are, two tiny resistors. Those are eighth watt or quarter watt. I think they're eighth watt. And two micas. Whoops. And that's it. Um, and I cleaned out all the holes so you can be able to use them when you mount the uh, components. So the next thing you want to do is to do a little prep work for adding some extra, uh, another transistor. This is going to be for a two-channel version and to um, uh, accommodate the extra resistor and an extra cable and uh, you'll understand that when we complete the task. So I'm going to shut the video off again and do some land cuts. So remember this, fast forward back and forth and you'll see the difference between this circuit board and the next image you get of this circuit board. And I'll explain what the differences are. All right, I have made the modifications to the printed circuit board and I'll explain each one of them individually if I can stay still enough the space right here that I just that I'm pointing to that is going to be um, a plane for some extra ground connections the cut right next to that little plane separates the land that was previously connected to an unused portion of the coil. So I'm using the land pattern um, for other purposes. I don't need to have that connection to that particular part of the coil. And so I uh, picked up some uh, surface area to work with. The scrapes here is for wire that I'm going to solder. That's a ground plane. That's a ground plane, and that is going to be a ground plane connection also to a transistor. Now, I drilled some extra holes. These holes on this um, area were not there before on this. So I put three holes in there. And up here, I put two more holes. It's hard to see. It's right next to the lettering. I'm trying to, hopefully you're going to get a, hopefully it's going to show up on the video. Um, it gets out of focus if I get it too close. But there's two holes next to the lettering right here. They're, I'm pointing at them, whether they're visible or not in the video. It's very hard to hold and look at everything. And then I put another hole here. And I just noticed I forgot one hole. I'm going to add a hole right here. So I'm... I'll, I'll, I forgot to drill that hole. I'm going to drill a hole right where I'm pointing to right now. And then I'm going to put some ground planes. So when I come back, you'll see all the holes drilled, including the one I missed. And you'll see a couple of wires on there. And then we'll pick up after that with the next portion of the video. Okay, I've modified the circuit board bottom uh, and made some connections. And what I did here is I've taken a wire and soldered it to the ground plane or the ground connection, the main ground point of all the components. And I put it in that one of those holes that I drilled. I bent it over. A transistor lead's going to come out through that hole eventually. 
Um, I just hooked the wire in there so it would hold in while I was doing the soldering. And then at the other end um, of this ground plane, I'll, as I'm calling it, I put a copper wire from there to the place where we modified that had three holes drilled in it. And I haven't soldered that end in yet. Um, when I soldered that whole pad together with all the components, that will give me a ground on that pad. That pad that I've separated, that portion of the, the, the land I've separated, I've just made it as a working pad for uh, giving me a place to create some extra ground points. Okay, I think I did okay on that one. All right, so we're going to start mounting components. So I'll get the components together, put them down, and we'll continue from there. All right, I have the components that I'm going to be adding to the circuit. To make a one channel, I only need one diode and one resistor. To make a two channel, I need to have another transistor, another diode, and another resistor. So the first thing I'm going to do is put the two components in for the one channel. There's the transistor that came with the plasma ball. Hopefully you can see it Oops, on the circuit board. Hopefully you can see it. A little closer view. Uh, that's the transistor. It's a DAD822. I believe that's the um, description on it. Let me see. D882, excuse me. D882. Uh, you can get them off the internet. I bought a bag of 50. I have a little bag of 50 here. They are ideal transistors for this application. The second transistor for channel 2 does not have to be one of those. It can be any kind of switching transistor, a 3904, a 2N3904, or a 2N2222. You can get down a Radio Shack. Uh, 3904s, 2N3904s, they're about a 10 cents a piece um, when you buy them from Mouser or um, Jenko or whatever. You pay way more for shipping, so if you go to order them, order uh, enough for several projects. Uh, the diodes, I'm using uh, uh, 1N one one, one N 17s, I believe. Um, any diode would work. Um, just really any normal uh, diode would work. Shockney diodes are better. Germanium diodes are better because they have a faster switching time. Um, but I'll try to document the components that were used. I think I did, and I have to go back and look. I think I already did do the documentation on that. So anyway, I'm going to put the first couple opponents in for channel one. Very simple. The diode intent is to protect the transistor when you reverse bias the transistor uh, from the trigger standpoint. Uh, the Spooky is capable of generating plus and minus voltages. This plasma ball only needs plus voltages. Um, if you don't set the offset for 100% plus, you could deliver a negative signal, which is okay, because this diode will take care of it uh, and, and protect the circuit from the transistor from getting damaged. And that diode goes in alongside, on this particular guy, it goes alongside this, there's a little spot there. I hope, I hope this is all, be able, you'll be able to see this. So I'm going to put the diode in, and you really want to observe the polarity. You want the diode to go in so the anode is connected to the ground plane, or the anode is on this side. The cathode is on that side. Anode that side, cathode this side. Put it in. The black stripe on the diode is the cathode that's pointing to the top of the board towards the switch. And I'm pushing that down in there. And use some pliers so I can pull it tight. There was a transistor mounted in that area before, and we now are using it for a diode. Okay, so I've got the I've got it in there. You can see the diode, and you can look at the back of the board, and you'll see where I placed it. You can see the wires coming up. Okay, now the transistor is the next component. 
if I can pick it up, I can install it. I'm not going to solder anything right away because I'm going to do all my soldering at once. And that resistor goes, let's get my act together here, goes from one of the holes I drilled, one of the holes I drilled, to the R2 hole. R2, there was a resistor in that hole. One of the holes I drilled. There we go. I got it in there. The value of the transistor is 1.2K. 1.2K. Okay, now I have that in there. And those are the two components that you, you have to add for a single channel plasma bulb modification. Solder those in, bring a wire in for triggering, and we'll, you'll see that very shortly. And you're all done. We'll solder everything, put everything back, and you're all done for a single channel. Pretty easy. The two channel is the one that requires a lot more work because you have to get a transistor that's not readily, it's not already there. When you take the plasma ball apart, you'll see that there's a transistor you're going to be using. You don't have to buy anything. Uh, resistors are real cheap and diodes are real cheap. Get them at your local radio shack or you can do a bulk order. Okay, so now I'm going to stop the video and come back and get myself all ready to talk about setting it up for channel 2. Or 2 channel plasma.